message of grace is brought to you by Christian people who believe the Bible to be the Word of God and who appreciate its power and authority. Within the pages of the Bible itself, there is a God-given design for its study. Rightly dividing the Word of Truth is the key to understanding the Bible. We're glad you've joined us for another interesting look into God's infallible book as Richard Jordan, president of Grace School of the Bible, presents another in a series of messages designed to help you understand and enjoy the Bible. Let's join them now. We're certainly glad you've joined us today. and We trust that our time together in God's Word will prove a real blessing and help to you. We're going to look again at Romans chapter number 5. That's an exciting passage of Scripture. We've already been down through some of it, and we're going to continue down through the passage today. Uh, there's a tremendous uh, transition in the thinking of the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter number 5. He begins in verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we've talked to you about how that because of the Lord Jesus Christ's death at Calvary, God has provided peace for us. As we rest our faith and our confidence in what Jesus Christ did for us at Calvary, God Almighty takes what Jesus Christ did and, and gives it to us as we rest our faith in Him. Now to him that works is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt, Paul has told us in Romans 4. But to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You know, it's important to understand that faith, a saving faith, uh, is, is not working. Rather, it's believing from the heart that form of doctrine which was committed to you, communicated to you, delivered to you, Paul says in Romans 6. Um, you know, I spent many years as an unsaved person trying to figure out what I had to do to, to believe. I went to a church that uh, what was communicated to me in the religious system I was raised in was that if I wanted to believe and, and trust God, that I needed to do certain kind of works, religious works and other kind of things that I needed to do. And I did all those things. And yet I never had any peace with God. I never had the heart that was, had the confidence that there was no hostility uh, between God and me. And I knew for sure if I was to die, I'd die and go to hell. I'd suffer the wrath of an angry God against my sin. Because though I wanted to have, have peace, and though I had asked Him into my heart, as they say, and I had done all these religious things, and had the catechism, and been confirmed, and, and joined the... You know, I had the little certificate said he's a fit member of the kingdom of God and all that kind of stuff. And yet, I knew in my heart that before God, I had a problem. I was a sinner. Then one day I heard the good news that Jesus Christ died for my sins. And that God took my sin and placed it on Him in the body of His own Son there. When I trusted Him, God, that instant, justified me. And being justified because of who I am in Christ, I have peace with God. The penalty of sin completely taken care of. Then he goes on and says, By whom? By the Lord Jesus Christ also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. In other words, what, what, what happens when you trust Christ is that the past is taken care of. We're justified and the penalty of sin is paid for and there's never any fear of death and hell and judgment again because Jesus Christ has paid it all. God made Him to be sin for us in order that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. And because we have this complete, perfect uh, position in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have this new identity in Christ. That's why He can say, being justified. This is who we are in Christ. Because of that, we also have access by faith into this grace when we stand. In other words, not only is, it, is the past taken care of, but the present, uh, the life of Jesus Christ is ours right now. You know, sometimes we, we, we think that you have to die and go to heaven to get eternal life. That's not it. Paul is saying that because Christ died for us and took, out, took all of our sin out of the way. He therefore imputes to us and gives to us His righteousness. Because we have, have perfect righteousness in Christ, therefore God gives us His eternal life. We've already seen that in Romans. God will give eternal life to anyone who has absolute perfect righteousness. And because I'm in Christ, not because I'm doing something or not doing something, not because of my religion or my intellectualism or my philanthropic and eleemosynary interest, but rather because I simply come just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, the song says. We come and trust Christ. God puts us in His Son and in Christ He makes us righteous. And He makes us that permanently and for keeps. 
Then he says, we have access to that. We have the ability to, to get a hold of that. Access is, is, is a, uh, it's a good 20th century word, 21st century word, in fact. It's a computer word. You go to my desk in my, my office, and there's a computer on my desk, and it's got a hard drive in it. It's got a memory system in it. And there's all kinds of information on that hard drive. And I turn the computer on, and I punch in the right command system, uh, command sequence, and, and it accesses the information on that hard drive. Now that computer is not of much value to me. In fact, it just takes up desk space until I access the information. But when I access the information in the word processor, or the spreadsheet, or the database, or, or the game systems, or whatever, when I access that information, then I can utilize it and put it to work, and I can get some work done. And when he says, we also, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace when we stand, you and I have this wonderful identity in Christ as believers. And we can take that identity that we have in Christ and see it go to work in the details of our life as we walk by faith. You see, the Christian life is lived day by day on the same basis that, is, that it is initially received. You're saved by grace through faith, and your Christian life day by day lives and functions on the basis of grace, by grace through faith. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. The only response that grace will and can accept is faith. We've already learned that. In chapter 4, verse 16, he says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace, to the end that the promise might be sure. And the greatest passage in your Bible on the security of the believer and the security of who we are in Christ is this passage we're looking at here. The past is secure. The present, the present is secure. We have access to our assets in Christ as we by faith rest in who we are. And then he says, and we rejoice in hope of, uh, of, of the glory of God. You know, when you trust Christ, he takes away your sin and he gives you his life. Never fall for half the gospel, will you? Half of the gospel is that he takes care of our sins. And the forgotten half seems to be that he also then gives us his life. And not only do we have the past and the present, but we also have the future. We rejoice in hope of eternal glory. In the end, for the believer, it's just going to be glory. We sing that song, Oh, that will be glory for me, glory for me. In the end, my ace in the hole is no matter what happens now, no matter how bad things might get, uh, the, the, no matter how good they might get, in the end, it's just glory. And it's real glory. So we've got the past taken care of, we've got the present secure, and the future just untold glory awaits. A man told me one time, he said, I don't, I don't like all that pie in the sky by and by stuff that you preach. Well... <laughs> You know, if your religion wouldn't tell you where you're going when you die, it's not worth a dead horse. And uh, you don't have to wait till you die to get eternal life. It's your, yours as a present possession right now. But you know, I want some pie in the sky by and by too. I'm looking for the glory of God out there in the future. Romans chapter 3 says, All of sin and come short of the glory of God. Here he says, We rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Between those coming short and rejoicing in it, possessing it, stands the cross, the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, where He was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification so we could have eternal life through Him. Now, after having gone over all that wonderful uh, uh, truth at, uh, of what justification qualifies us for and the position that we have, then He begins to take that that issue about the past being secure, the penalty of sin is paid, the power of sin is broken, the presence of sin is going to be removed one day. And then he says in verse 3, and not only so. It's not just this big doctrinal understanding. And it's not just this, this identity of who we are and what's going on. But there's something very practical that this truth uh, has to impact in our life on a day-by-day -day basis because of who we are in Christ. He says, not only are these wonderful positional truths a reality, but we glory in tribulation also. Now that's going to talk about the nasty now and now. That's going to talk about our living in time on planet earth, day in and day out as believers. And he said, we don't just have this lofty, exalted spiritual identity and position in Christ 
But all this that we have in Christ functions and lives in our bodies of flesh. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And His living in me, and the, the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. His living in me and through me is something that, that has an impact in my life day in and day out. As a husband, it has an impact in my marriage. As a, as a father, it has an impact in my home. As a, as a worker, it has an impact in my, my job, uh, job situation. As a, as a student or a teacher or a, a neighbor or whatever the circumstances of your life may be, it has an impact there because it lives in you. Now listen to what he says in verse 3. Because the key to trouble and difficulty in your life as a believer is in this passage. Not only so, but we glory in tribulation. We rejoice and glory in tribulation also. Now, he's not saying that we see trouble as something that we go out and seek. You know, He's not saying he sticks his chin out and lets anybody come along and clip it that comes along. He's not saying we just like to be miserable and happy and have trouble and pressure and problems and difficulties and trials and tribulations. That's not what He's saying, look, trouble happens in life, and you know it does. Difficulties come in life, and you know it does. Uh, every time you get up on a mountain peak of, uh, of joy and happiness, you have to remember there's a valley on both sides of the mountain. And there tend to be two valleys for every, 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 uh, every high point. And uh, he, he says, knowing this, so the, the, the fact is you're going to have problems and you're going to have pressures and you're going to have difficulties and strains and hardships and afflictions and, and disappointments. Well, how do you handle them? He says, look, because of who we are in Christ, we handle the difficulties and the troubles in life in a very special way. We've been equipped with some divine operating assets that give us the capacity to not look at our difficult circumstances as things that are going to destroy us, but as means whereby victory can be won in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. And you ought to underline the next word in Romans 5, 3 because it's the key. Knowing, knowing, knowing that tribulation works patience, patience experience, and experience hope, and hope makes not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to, uh, unto us. Paul says we can rejoice, we can glory in tribulation also. We can, we can actually take heart in present distress and trouble because we know something. We know that tribulation works patience. Now you know what it is to work. That's to go out and be productive. Uh, my, my children and I just the other day, I've, I have uh, two teenage boys and at this stage in life and uh, we were out in our backyard and we were doing some yard work and we were cleaning up and their mother was there and uh, my wife and their mother and she was giving us the honeydew list, you know, and I was passing it on to the kids. And uh, so we were doing yard work. We were trimming hedges and cutting limbs out of trees and, and, and putting in some sod and doing a bunch of stuff. And one of, one of the boys was standing there and his brother said, hey, get to work. And he said, well, I've been working. He said, yeah, but you hadn't gotten much done yet. <laughs> and you know, that's what you want. When, you, when somebody's working for you, you want them to get something done. You want them to be productive. You don't want them just to be spending energy. You want them to get some, something accomplished. We know something. Because of what we know about who we are in Christ and about God's grace to us and about God's attitude toward us because of Christ, we understand that tribulation, trouble, distress, pressure, whatever it might be, works for us. It has a purpose in our lives other than than destruction. You notice he doesn't say tribulation destroys you. And tribulation works punishment. And tribulation works God getting even with you. You see the justice of God because of who we are in Christ. The justice of God is free to deal with us on a different basis it's, it, than in the past. In the past we, we sinned and our sin deserved punishment and wrath and judgment and punishment and the punitive uh, wrath of God. But now, because we're in Christ, the justice of God is free to deal with us in a positive manner in order to build us up and to strengthen us in Him. So tribulation works 
becomes productive in my life, and it produces and develops patience. Now, patience is another way of saying peace under pressure. Patience is that, is that thing that says, here it is, and I've got to work it out, and I stick with it, and I stay with it, and, I, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be persistent, and I'm going to have fortitude and steadfastness, and I'm, not, and I'm going to endure and get the thing done. You know what tribulation does? It works, patience. James chapter number 1 uh, says something about a similar kind of a passage. James chapter number 1, speaking about some people in, the, in, in a time of, of tremendous trouble. James chapter 1, he says in verse 3, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You see, it's the trying of your faith that works patience. Trouble comes along, and what trouble does is it sees whether or not you're really serious about truth. Are you really going to take your stand in the truth of God? Are you really going to know what God, what God has said to you and given to you to know? You know, if you don't get in the Word of God, my friend, the reason we have a Bible teaching program like this and a Bible teaching ministry we're not trying to get you to join something. We're not trying to give, have a bunch of ceremonies and a bunch of lifestyle changes for you and get you to do what we want you to do and come and affect us. We just want to teach you the Word of God. That's why I, I do this. That's why this host of people here in the production crew produce it. That's why there are people in your community that see that this program is aired in, in, in your town and uh, brought into, into your television set here. The reason is we understand the value of knowing the truth of God's Word. Jesus said, you shall know the truth. What is the truth? Christ said, thy word is truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And if you know something about the truth, as the, the Word of God as the Word of truth, and it's only the Word of truth when it is rightly divided, that's the, why I draw on a chalkboard and teach about that week in and week out here is because the issue is the Word of God rightly divided, the Word of truth. And when you know that, when you begin to understand it and it begins to take a hold and the, and the sound doctrine from God's Word begins to permeate your mind and your understanding and renew your mind, then you look at the trouble that comes along and instead of that trouble destroying you, instead of that trouble being a testimony that God doesn't love you, and that God doesn't have your best interest on His heart, and that God isn't really concerned about you, and that you're out of His will, and that He's angry and He's trying to get even with you. Rather than that, it'll tell you the truth. Rather than all those lie systems, it'll tell you truth. Rather than all those maybe scriptural but undispensational systems, it'll tell you the truth about the word rightly divided. It'll tell you that today, tribulation works patience. God takes the trouble that comes into our lives and causes it to work and become productive in our lives. And as we stay by the truth of who God says we are in Christ, and as we're patient, and we're not caused to, 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 to doubt God, and we don't look at our trouble as though it were God's wrath and anger coming upon us like once it would have been with Israel. But we, we understand what it is, that it is what it is. It has a new purpose today, and that's to work patience in us. Trying our faith trying our reliance on the Word of God to see if we're going to stay with the Word or we're going to abandon what God says and go by a human viewpoint, a religious viewpoint. And you see, when you stay by the Word, when it tries and tests us and, and it finds that our faith is true and it stays by the Word, you know what it works? It works patience. And then he says patience. It works, it works the ability just to be at peace and to rest. You know how wonderful it is in the midst of trouble just to be able to relax and not worry about things. That's a wonderful thing. Not have to run to and fro and jump around like popcorn on a hot skillet, but just to be able to relax. And just to be able to trust God and know that He has your best interest at heart and that He's already done the best for you because He already put His Son on the cross at Calvary. He's already proven how much He loves you. You see, you don't have to look at your circumstances to find out how much God loves you today. God's love to you isn't tied to your circumstances. It isn't tied to your bank account. It isn't tied to the condition of your health. It isn't tied to your romantic life or your marriage life or how your kids are doing or how your parents are treating you. It isn't tied to your job situation. It isn't tied to anything going on in your life today. It's tied to only one thing. 
Verse 8 says, God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Religion, human viewpoint, will tell you that God's esteem of you and value for you is, is measured by how healthy and wealthy you are. And that God's disfavor is, is measured by problems and troubles coming into your life. And God says, not so. My value, my love for you is measured by one thing. And it's already been historically demonstrated in time in the person of Jesus Christ when He went to Calvary and shed His blood for you. When He was raised again the third day for you. He sits at the Father's right hand today for you as a living testimony of God's, how much God values you. And you see, that's the issue. And when, when we rejoice in those things, and we rejoice in that truth, and we don't let trouble move us away from the truth of God's grace to us in Christ, it produces pain. We have peace. Under all the pressure, there's peace. And then the peace, the patience, produces experience. You, you begin to get skilled at, at handling problems and difficulties. And then the experience, it produces hope. It, it, it tells me, hey, there's a way to handle these things, and there's hope. There, there's, there, there's a confidence in, I can stick with what God says, and I can find the answer, because the answer is there. And hope, he says, makes not ashamed. You know, God's grace will never let you down. It'll never disappoint you. I heard a fellow say one time many years ago, he says, God's love never lets you go, and it never lets you down, and it never lets you off. And it's wonderful to know that. And, and, and what we learn, what we know as we rejoice in God's grace to us in Christ, as we stay with the truth, it, it works. Tribulation works and produces patience. And patience produces experience and skill and handling problems. It produces maturity in our character and we grow up. And then that experience produces hope and hope makes us not ashamed. But you know, you've got to have divine viewpoint. And the divine viewpoint about tribulation and trouble if you're going to be bold in the face of difficulties and problems. Now, why would, it, why would you have that kind of boldness and hope? Well, verse number six says, verse number five says, hope makes not ashamed. You see, the guilt and the fear is gone. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. You see, what happens as we begin to, as we rejoice in God's grace and as we, as we, as we see God's grace as for what it is and as we take our stand there, as we, as we are educated by it and we take our stand there, we, 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 we look at the details of our life and the circumstances and the problems of our life from the divine perspective, we know something. We know that when trouble comes, God isn't sending that to us to punish us or to get even with us because he sees wickedness or, or failure in us. He sees us in his son. And therefore he can take that trouble that, that comes into our lives and he, he takes that and gives us the capacity to respond to it on the basis of who we are and that trouble works patience. It gives us peace in the midst of it because we have confidence in who we are in Christ. And that patience works experience. We begin to be able to be skilled and mature in our handling of the problems. And the experience gives us hope. And the hope makes us not ashamed because the love of God should. We get to the place where we understand God's value and His esteem, His love for us in a way that we never could have any other way. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. But God commended His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. See what He says? As soon as He mentions the love of God, He doesn't say anything about God giving you a Cadillac or paying your light bill. He doesn't say anything about God you know, fixing Aunt, Aunt Tilly's ingrown toenail or Uncle Bud's sacroiliac or getting Grandma out of the hospital. He doesn't say anything about those kind of things. That's what religious people do. He doesn't say anything about building great buildings and temples. You know what he talks about? He talks about Calvary. 
because that's where God's love is, is, is made real. And that's what we begin to see, that in us there isn't any hope. And in, in, in what men does, uh, and what man does, what men might do, isn't the issue. Where the issue is, is in what God did at Calvary. You see, we rejoice in the love of God because we rejoice in the tribulation and that works patience and so forth because we understand who we are in Christ. And we understand that these things can, can be used because of, of God's love to us to build us up and to make us stronger and to develop inner strength. Uh, the issue isn't the outward strength of the kingdom program. We're going to study that next time, so I hope you'll be with us. But let me say to you clearly that God Almighty today is focusing and working in your inner man. His ministry and work today is inside of the believer, in the inner man, on the spiritual level. And He strengthens us by His Spirit in the inner man as we take the truth of God's Word and rely upon it and stay with it. Tribulation works patience, knowing, knowing we understand God's truth. We want to help you in that regard. We want you to understand God's grace. It comes out of the Word of God rightly divided. That's why we have this program. That's why we offer free Bible study tapes to you week after week here. Why don't you get your pencil now as, as Dan comes to give, the, give you the, the address and the tape of this week and, and write us or call us and get the free Bible study tape that will help you to get established in the truth of God's Word rightly divided and the riches of His grace to you in Christ. Thanks for listening today. We're certainly happy to have you with us and we want the program to be a blessing to you. We want you to be built up in the faith. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you be sure to tell us that too. Till next time, Maranatha. Thank you, Brother Jordan, for that message from the Word of God. Friends, we have a cassette tape that we'd like you to have to go along today's study. The tape is entitled, The Key to All My Trouble. It's yours free of charge. It's our way of saying thanks for listening. We'll be happy to see that you receive your free copy along with a free subscription to our monthly Bible study, The Grace Journal, if you simply write us here at The Message of Grace. The address should be on your screen. That's The Message of Grace, Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. If you prefer, you can also call us during normal business hours at area code 708-529-0520. Request tape offer number 234. That's tape offer number 234. The Message of Grace is the ministry of Grace School of the Bible, and we're glad you've been with us today. If our study together has been a help to you, we are happy to put you in touch with a Bible study in this area where the message of God's wonderful grace is proclaimed from His rightly divided Word. And friend, if you are still not sure of salvation, that your sins are forgiven, and that you have eternal life as a present possession, let us know. We're happy to send you some gospel literature that will show you the way. The address again is the Message of Grace, Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. Thanks for being with us today, and God's dust until we next time for another Message of Grace.